Welcome to the 135th episode of the Flipped Learning Remixed podcast. The podcast that cut, it's tripped over my own tagline. The podcast that mixes cutting edge technology with learning. I'm your host, Troy Cockrum. Uh, today I'm joined um, by Margaret Powers. Uh, Margaret, can you tell us uh, who you are and what is your role in education? Sure. So um, I am a technology coordinator and coach at an independent school outside of Philadelphia. And I'm kind of involved around the social sphere um, with things like the Global Online Academy, uh, the Teachers Guild, and a couple of different spaces trying to explore design thinking and innovations in education. And so the reason I wanted to bring you on is we wanted to talk design thinking um, and, um, and a few things related to that. But first, uh, can, you, can you define design thinking? I mean, I think in its simplest form, really, design thinking is just human-centered problem solving. Um, so it's really focusing on people and keeping empathy at the core of that work. And, and I kind of like to say, and you tell me if this is correct or not, that it's it's looking at a problem from the u- from the user side of yeah. the problem. I would agree. Uh, and so, how does design thinking apply to a classroom or in education in general? I think there are really a lot of exciting applications. So, I mean, I use design thinking with my students who go as young as pre-K, um, and you know, partly just introducing a new way to look at problems, right? It's kind of this process. And through that process, I think they're really gaining some powerful mindsets, things like having a bias towards action and gaining comfort with failing forward. Um, And also kind of this creative confidence that, you know, David Kelly talks about in his book. Um, And I think that is really exciting to me to, to be able to introduce those mindsets and also skill sets to students through kind of a process that they can return to again and again when they hit kind of real world problems. And I also think it's really applicable in schools as a problem solving technique and, you know, tool when looking at the school as a whole. There's actually a great Edutopia article on that, um, I think just last week by Thomas Riddle and talking about, you know, using design thinking actually as a practice with you know, faculty and administration to think about how do you create change in your school, whether that's around culture or space. Um, it's really kind of something that you can use as your go-to to solve problems that are coming up in the school itself. And Thomas Riddle, if it's the same Thomas Riddle, has been on the podcast before. He runs the website Star Wars in the Classroom. Is that the same Thomas Riddle? I think that is the same. <laughs> So I've had him on, I don't, about a year ago, I believe, right, right after Disney bought the Star Wars franchise, he, we came on and had him come on the podcast. Um, so can you give like an example, probably both, but like a real world example that people might be able to relate design thinking to, but then also a classroom example of where they can kind of see design thinking in action? Sure. So um, I think, you know, one of my favorite examples is the Embrace Infant Warmer. And it's a story that comes out of the Stanford D School where they have a class called, um, I think, Design for Extreme Affordability. And the D School um, doesn't actually give degrees, but they have all sorts of kind of creative classes around design thinking that use that kind of protocol. And um, one of the groups that was taking the class kind of had this idea about trying to help infants who often would die because they weren't kept warm enough when they were first born. And so initially they thought, well, we just need to design cheaper incubators. Um, But they took this design thinking approach, which meant they had to go talk to the users. They had to go talk to the people who were really involved. And so they went over to some developing nations and talked to, you know, mothers in the villages and nurses and, you know, people at the hospitals and things. And what they discovered was that it really wasn't about, you know, creating a cheaper incubator. Um, that part of the big issue was a cultural feeling around if your baby goes to the hospital, they very likely might not come back. And so there was a stigma and fear around this and that part. Actually helped keep her newborn baby warm. 
So it's kind of a great example of thinking you can't really start out knowing the problem with design thinking. You have to kind of uncover it after really discovering what the users need and finding out from them their, their needs before jumping to, okay, here's the problem and here's how we can solve it. The, uh, the real world example that I like to refer to or that I've heard um, is the, is the uh, example of the Swiffer. Mm -hmm. is where, um, is Procter and Gamble, I believe, if I remember correctly, that makes the Swiffer, and think, they, yeah. they the uh, the sales of floor cleaners was in serious decline, and they kept telling their chemists and their designers, "Come up with a better solution to to cleaning," and and even though they were coming up with new and improved formulas, they still weren't the sales still weren't improving. And so then they looked at it from a design thinking perspective and they realized the problem wasn't the cleaner, but in the process to cleaning, the mop was a very inefficient method of cleaning. And they, that's when the Swifter was invented to solve a floor cleaning problem that they realized was a whole different problem that they weren't looking at previously. So, yeah, that's a good one. I think you were asking about in schools. Yes. Um, so one of our favorite things that we're we've been doing now in uh, the past two years at my school that we were actually inspired by um, Mary Cantwell, who has an amazing kind of adaptation to the D schools version of the design thinking process that I love and usually use with my students called Deep DT, which is discover, empathize, experiment, produce. So it's very kind of accessible for the younger elementary students um, in particular. And so we've used that with our kindergartners who have studied gingerbread babies or gingerbread cookies typically, and they read all the different stories. Um, and, you know, there was a kind of very just kind of structured, you know, unit around them where you read the books and then you bake the cookies and, and that's kind of it. Um, and we thought, well, can we dive deeper? And so um, one of the stories by Jan Brett that they read, the gingerbread cookies or babies actually run away. And so we thought this could be a really exciting opportunity to continue exposing our students to design thinking and these mindsets. And so we actually had their cookies run away and get taken out of the oven. Um, and the students you know, are very distraught, obviously, and um, you know, realize that they might have come alive. And now what do they do? And so we, um, you know, as the teachers, will send them a couple of different little clues that kind of give hints about what their needs are. And being in Pennsylvania, usually in the winter we do this and it's cold and often snowy. And so they find out, you know, their cookies are cold and they're lonely and they were scared. And so they start hearing these needs. And then we did some activities this year really trying to tap into that empathy piece and seeing the kids, you know, draw faces to, you know, think about how they were feeling and think about how do you connect and understand the needs of these cookies and actually develop empathy with them was really amazing. Um, and then we had them completely open-ended do some brainstorming and follow through the process to experiment and produce something that they felt would help meet these needs of the gingerbread babies. Um, so they ended up creating kind of these safe havens with different materials in our makerspace to, you know, put out and have the gingerbread be able to return to with little gingerbread size greenhouses and playgrounds and, you know, beds, bunk beds. Um, so the really students of any age, I think, can use design thinking as a process to tackle a problem um, and also just to develop things like empathy that are so critical to learning. And and that was going to be one question is what what age groups do you think this works well with and, and you've given an example that goes all the way down to kindergarten so. Yeah. Uh, um, can you repeat those uh, the deep DT what was the acronym stand for? So it's discover, empathize, experiment, and produce. Okay. I like I like that. I'm gonna to have to look up more about that. Yeah, and Mary um, so, has a lot of great resources on her site. Oh, does she? Okay, great. Um, and so uh, one of the reasons design thinking has come up uh, recently. I mean, it's been around for a while, and it's been on the edges of education for you know I've been hearing about it for the last couple of years, last you know a few years. Um, but Michelle Obama just brought it up, was it maybe two weeks ago? Yeah, about. Um, like that. <laughs> and um, 
she mentioned something called the Teachers Guild. Um, yeah. Tell us what the Teachers Guild is. So the Teachers Guild is this amazing platform um, that was created in collaboration with IDEO, which is a design firm that um, comes again from the Kelly Brothers and is connected to the D School. And their partnership with um, the Riverdale County School and just different organizations who have come on to be partners with this platform. So it's an online space where teachers around the globe can sign up for free um, to participate in design thinking challenges. And so the kind of hope is that over the next three years, they'll tackle the 30 biggest problems in education. Wow, that's, that's a, um, a big goal to it find is. the 30 biggest problems. Um, can you give us an example of, um, as you know, I've been having trouble with some of the tabs on my computer, so I can't pull up the Teachers Guild right now. But can you give us some examples of some of the problems that are currently on there that they either have solutions for or they're in the process of coming up with solutions for? Sure. So um, the first one that we kind of launched right at the end of the summer was about creating rituals and routines that establish a culture of innovation in schools, which I think is certainly a hot topic on a lot of people's minds. Um, and some really, I think, exciting ideas came out of that. And another one of my favorites that we just finished um, recently was how might we reimagine professional learning to continue to grow, feel inspired, and have a, the greatest impact on students. Um, so those are two of the previous ones. And you can go on and look at those collaborations and see the whole process that teachers went through and the, their ideas that kind of came out of it. Um, because the way it works is that there's a kind of discover phase at the beginning where people can come in and share ideas and insights really, before ideas really, it's insights about, you know, what it makes them think of, and then also insights that they've gained through empathy. Um, and so that's the first part of any collaboration. And the most powerful piece to me has been seeing that come alive in this current challenge in partnership with Michelle Obama's Reach Hire campaign. Um, so we have just moved out of that discover phase where some teachers and counselors and people were coming on sharing these amazing stories about their experiences to and through college and certain struggles trying to be maybe a first generation college student or dealing with things like the FAFSA form, um, which I can definitely vouch for as a very challenging experience. Uh, and now we've just launched into um, the next ID8 phase where we're really starting to brainstorm and form teams which is another, I think, really cool aspect to the site is that you can actually team up and collaborate with, you know, one or four or five other educators who you might have never met um, and might never meet in person, but can be connecting with and throwing ideas together to really come up with a whole plan for this idea that came out of some of the insights that we learned after talking with students um, at the beginning. So I don't know, I think I didn't actually say, but the current challenge is how might we create programs, processes, and tools to provide ongoing to support to all students on their journey to and through college? Oh, OK, OK. Um, and I probably should back up just a little bit, because you keep saying we. What is your involvement with the Teachers Guild? Yes, thanks. So I am a teacher coach on the Teachers Guild. So there's a number of educators who are just all educators, either classroom teachers or you know, it's like me as a technology coach and kind of roles like that across the US who are serving as teacher coaches on the site. So we're there to offer support all throughout the process. Um, we're kind of people who have done design thinking work before and now want to kind of share our experiences and help others dive into this work. So we will be there kind of to mentor people through the process um, and support them in figuring out kind of the trajectory of you know, design thinking as they go along. Do you know, do you know a number of how many teachers have joined at this point? Uh, I don't know actually the current count. I know um, we had a huge influx. We're really excited with this current challenge. I think having um, Michelle Obama be part of the collaboration certainly helps <laughs> get the word out easier than um, other ways. Yeah. So there's a lot of activity currently on the site um, with brainstorming right now. And I, you know, I, um, I found it helpful just to go back to the old challenges and look at the solutions to kind of kind of understand what the process looked like. Just seeing seeing the uh, selected or the solutions that were most popular um, 
gave me some good ideas of things, but then also kind of helped me understand what the whole site was about in the process. Yeah, and I think that's one thing that um, can be tricky when you first come on to the platform is it's kind of, you, you know, if you're new to design thinking, it might look a little bit foreign. It's like kind of what what's happening and what, where do I get started? Um, but one of the exciting pieces, I think, is that you don't have to even know anything about design thinking when you join. You can really learn as you go along and really kind of experience that whole bias towards action um, and figure it out as you're, you're moving along and as you get support from teacher coaches um, to figure out what is design thinking as you work through how might we tackle this issue of, you know, college. Um, so what happens next is we'll move into Evolve in about, I think, see, about 16 days. So we'll take all of these ideas that people, again, across the world are sharing on the platform and we'll kind of select, you know, push people to try and evolve those ideas to like iterate and take them a little bit deeper. Um, and then there'll be this select stage where we'll kind of narrow in on really ideas that we think have a lot of potential to move forward and impact a large amount of people. Um, and then finally get to select favorites um, in collaboration with, with, you know, the team at IDEO and other partners who are supporting this challenge. And, and who, cause it's free for educators to sign up, correct? Mm -hmm. So IDEO is a is a partner. Who who else is sort of behind this or funding this? I think so. IDEO is kind of the main really okay. partner behind it. But each challenge has different partners. So the current one, the current collaboration, um, is doing is done in partnership with Reach Higher and the Better Make Room, which also you know both come out of kind of Michelle Obama. And then other organizations like Google for Education, um, Blue Engine, College Advising Corps, there's a whole kind of list, particularly for this challenge, but in each one, where organizations have kind of stepped forward and said, we're willing to kind of help support, whether that's through coaching and offering ideas and feedback, or other ways throughout the challenge to help bring those ideas to fruition. And that's uh, the first I heard about it was through Google for Education. They started promoting it about... Mm, I'm going to say maybe six months ago or maybe a slightly less than that. Uh, but then when Michelle Obama started promoting it, like you said, it really took off. And yeah, and Google was the kind of one of the first partners that we had with that initial challenge around innovation. And so out of each partnership, something happens. So I think they're creating actually a playbook of those favorite ideas that can then be shared with larger audiences. Um, and they are, there's also been school district partnerships. So like our last partnership was I think done with with maybe Sonoma County um, in California. And so a lot of the ideas were taken then back to schools in Sonoma to actually be tested and hopefully implemented. Um, and then so can you give us a few more uh, examples of, of how how a teacher can implement design thinking or anything they they get from the um, Teachers Guild into their classroom? Is this something that you have to, does it have to be your whole class or can you do it just as a tool for certain units or how can you implement this? Yeah, I think it's really flexible, which is really nice. Um, I think you can kind of try it out in all sorts of different ways and find what's going to work best for your class community. Um, I think, you know, you can definitely do little pieces at different points. So one of the things I like about how Mary has kind of conceptualized deep DT is it's actually in like a sphere um, and you can kind of come in and out at different points. It's not linear. And um, I think you can certainly at times, you know, maybe dive right into this IDA phase where you've already done a lot of discovery work, maybe just in the curriculum and learning the content. And now you're thinking, well, how might we reimagine the experience of a Civil War soldier? Um, and you didn't do a lot of, you know, discover work in the typical way of design thinking, but you know, you kind of laid that foundation and now you're doing jumping right into brainstorming. Um, or maybe you just do empathy piece at some point. And I think you can also, especially with the kind of push to maker education, you know, really capitalize on the prototyping aspect of design thinking and have kids getting hands on making prototypes that they're iterating on um, over time as another, you know, way to express through making and hands on design. Yeah, I do see this working very well in tandem with the makerspace or the maker movement type of um, concept. 
Yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of exciting connections there. And I think, you know, I've seen a foreign language teacher, you know, challenge our students, how might we share some of the things that you've learned about culture and, and language this year with other students um, and then create like a, an exhibit that was put out in the lobby of the school for other students to engage in. So I think there's all different kinds of angles where really any discipline can look at the approach and think about whether the process could be valuable in their classroom. Um, and I think it's also a great thing for teachers to kind of try out on their own together first. So I would encourage teachers to like see if anyone in your school, like a small group, would be interested in trying a challenge. You know, maybe you can redesign one of each other's classrooms and say, how might we, you know, reimagine this room to, you know, better enhance some kind of need that the teacher raises that they have. Um, and it could be as simple as we want more light, you know, and, and they all kind of you work together to use design thinking to tackle that problem. Um, and I think, you know, through things like the Teachers Guild and there's actually tons of great resources online, one of which is the DTK 12 chat, which happens every Wednesday at 9 Eastern, 9 p.m. Eastern. Um, but really the hashtag is constantly being used throughout the week. Um, it's a great resource if you're just trying to kind of get started or you're curious. If you use that hashtag and reach out, you will definitely get responses of people who can offer ideas and things to like check this article out or try this. So I think if you're curious about design thinking, you know, check out online articles. Things like Edutopia have a lot. And certainly the Guild is a way where you can kind of go and be a lurker a little bit and see what it's like and then hopefully dive in and try a little bit in a, pla in a place that's kind of not as um, high stakes as maybe in your classroom at first. Yeah, I think conceptually when you first hear about it, it seems really big. And, and um, I think when the resources you've given help kind of framework it and, and give it um, some context so teachers can size it down to what makes sense. Awesome. The, and, and I just noticed the Imagination Foundation, too, announced an inventor's challenge today um, for starting today until March 11th um, that I think would fit quite well with design thinking. So, yes, I saw that email. Yeah, we're having our kindergartners are going to do, um, I think, an exploration in inventors coming up this spring, and we're planning to use again design thinking as kind of the process through which they'll dive into this topic of inventors, and then hopefully create something that they feel like is a need that they could solve through an invention that they're going to come up with. So, um, for our listeners, how? How can they, do you blog, do you, are you on Twitter? How can they find you if they want to reach out to you or find out more about you? Sure, please do. If you have any questions or just want to chat, you can find me on Twitter um, at, at Empowers3. And I do have a blog where I try and be pretty active. Um, and it's uh, margaret-powers.com. Um, and certainly, you know, sign up for the guild and we'll reach out to you and say hello. Um, and if you're going to be at South by Southwest, I would also love to say hello in person. We're going to be working with some other amazing educators to talk about design thinking and kind of innovation um, at the Ready Go Summit on Monday. So if you're going to be there, please stop by and say hello. Well, thank you for your time. Um, I've been wanting to do a podcast on design thinking for quite a while. I've been trying to wrap my head around it. And then this whole Michelle, Michelle Obama thing came up, and I thought this is the time time to do it, the time when it's starting to become really topical. So awesome. thank you well, for your for time. Yeah. And for the listeners, um, I will be back again soon.